Hello everybody, I'm Arn, and once again we're back to talk about Applied Energistics 2 again today, or AE2 for short. And today we're going to talk about basic automation and auto crafting. And there's two flavors of that. There's the auto crafting, which is what everyone thinks of when they think of AE2, and there's passive generation. Now, to get started on any of these, however, you need to add in crafting processors to be able to handle any sort of auto crafting job. And to do those, you need two things. You need crafting co-processing units and crafting storage units. And the crafting storage units come in different sizes and are made from the various storage components that you made previously when setting up your digital storage if you used it. And to use these, you just lay them down in any sort of rectangular shape, and it can be as simple as one crow processor and one storage unit, and there we have an actual active crafting system. Now, the more crafting co-processing units that are attached, the more simultaneous jobs it can run within a crafting job, which is important if you are crafting something wildly complex to make that involves a whole bunch of crafting steps. This means we can now craft several at once within that single craft. The crafting storage, however, works it differently because this determines how many things you can craft at once. Every craft requires a certain number of bytes. The more components that are used and the more that you're trying to craft in a single batch, the more memory storage you're going to need to do it. So now we have a fairly sizable single battery here that can craft several things at once in a fairly large batch. All right, so once you've got a crafting unit set up, you can now work on basic automation. And the first step to that is to make an ME pattern provider. And you just hook that up to your network wherever you want it to be able to pass into a machine or something. In this case, we're gonna use the energized smelter from mechanism. We're gonna put it right here. But, well, you notice there's a problem because this requires power and we're not getting any power in through here. And there's two ways you can solve this. One is just hook it up to a normal power supply with a normal power cable and jam that in however you feel like you can handle that. That there is a way to get power out of your AE2 network, but it's not entirely intuitive. What you can do is use P2P tunnels to accomplish this. And in this case, we're going to use a creative energy cube to pass RF power into our AE2 network that will not be consumed by the controller itself because we're going to do it with an energy P2P tunnel. Although this is gonna change over to a normal one when we click on this and set this up, but we can connect this to our ME controller. And you notice that it's back to being an ME P2P tunnel. We can right click it on it with an energy acceptor, energy cell, or another battery like this to turn it into an energy P2P tunnel. From there, we can then extend this out, put another P2P tunnel on it, and then Shift right click that to get the address and right click it into the energy tunnel like this. And from there, we can just drop in the mechanism pipes and you can see that it, because it's green, it has power and it's transferring directly from this energy cube. So it does allow you to drop power to any random spot in your base strictly through your AE2 network. It's up to you if you wanna do it that way or with just normal power cables and cabling to how you're handling it. I've had good success with Ender IO in 1.12 doing that, as well as Laser IO in 1.19. The trick is that it really depends on whether you need to manually extract things out of some of your machines or not, because some machines may not pass things back into the pattern provider when they're completed. But to show what I mean with that, we're going to need to go to the next step, which is to add a new terminal to our network, the ME pattern encoding terminal. If we click into this, this almost looks like the ME terminal or the crafting terminal, but what we actually need to do here are put in blank patterns. And now say we want to use that energized smelter to make stone. Well, what we need to do is switch over to pattern processing because this is for auto crafting. This is how we craft using machine. We click over to this and then we can load in a recipe straight from GAI or we can manually add in whatever we want to handle the recipes. So say for instance, we wanted to be able to do this in batches of like four at a time. We could put tell it to send four cobblestone either that way or we can empty that out and just stack these up to four, up to four or five because this is a processing pattern, it's a machine. And then we can tell it to expect five stone as the output. At that point, we can then encode the pattern, go into the pattern provider, put the recipe in the top slot here, quickly add a chest with a storage bus and a crafting terminal so that we can actually show what we're doing here, throw a bunch of cobblestone into storage and then hit the crafting button and tell it we want it to make 20 stone. And you can see that the energy smelter immediately started cooking and has the 20 cobblestone inside of it. As it finishes, you'll see that it just stays in the machine, however. 
because we haven't told mechanism specifically to auto eject its items. You notice it still, however, is not ejecting because what we also didn't do is tell it to input and output from the top, which this one works, but for some mods, you can't insert and extract from the same sides. When we come out here, it has now extracted it. And if we look back in the crafting terminal, we now have some stone being crafted. If we come up here to crafting status, you can also see the job currently in process, currently eating up our CPU. If we wanted to end this prematurely, we can just jam the cancel button and it will stop the job. But any crafting still in progress will also automatically complete because, well, it doesn't extract the materials from the machine that they're sent to. Now, I started with what is theory is the easy case here because that just lets you set up any machine for processing. But what if you want to do just a free crafting recipe? Well, there's good news for that. Well, as luck has it, there's a built-in device called the Molecular Assembler, which we can just drop down and put a pattern provider on it. And because these are all AE2 devices, they chain the channel directly into them. You can see that this is now using three channels, one for the PWB tunnel and one for each of these pattern providers, but it will chain straight through these to do everything it needs to do. Now we can come back over to the pattern encoder and say we want to make a chest. And we can just clear this out like that. And we want it to be out of oak planks, or at least that's what we think when we start. And then we can just encode the recipe like that. And then we can throw a bunch of birch planks and a bunch of oak planks in. But if we come over here and put the recipe in and then come back to the crafting terminal and tell it to create a chest, it's gonna fail because there's not enough oak planks. But this is easily fixable because we can just take that back out, bring it back to the encoder, put it back in, which if it hadn't been loaded, it will reload the recipe. And then you notice there's this substitutions disabled checkbox here. If we turn that on, it will now try to substitute any similar item it can find in this crafting recipe to use, in which case it's going to find these birch planks. And then re-encode that, put it back in, and now, we can kick off this job and it will properly know what it do and it will try to use the oak planks first. We can come over here and well, it doesn't really show anything in a molecular assembler, but that's okay. But you can see that it did return the two chests almost immediately. Now I should note that you can add acceleration cards to the molecular assemblers to have them craft even faster in the cases where you are having it manually craft a ton at once. You can also connect more than one molecular assembler to a pattern provider and it will attempt to use them. You can also connect a second pattern provider to it and both of them can potentially feed into this assembler as it has capacity. So you can set up gigantic grids or stars with a bunch of molecular assemblers surrounding them and they all will share and try to use what they can. So that's good for expanding your capacity. Now, before we go, I should also note that there are smithing table patterns and stone cutting patterns and you need to understand these don't actually use these tools. They actually output from a molecular assembler directly. So you can see in here, I have patterns for the stone to make stone bricks, a netherite shovel and a diamond shovel. And I have this set up this way because if you try to set up crafting patterns involving things like tools, which in base vanilla Minecraft would be the only reason you would use the smithing table, you can't use one that's been picked up by a player because they have NBT data attached and AE2 just kind of chokes all over those tools. So you need to craft them from scratch. So I have it crafting the diamond shovel and then the netherite shovel. So for example, if we click this, you can see that it is making all of the pieces. And this is what I meant by you need to have a crafting CPU big enough because this is using 48 bytes, which isn't really big at all, but they can get very, very absurd. But if you click that, you can see that it starts going and then now we have a netherite shovel created from scratch. Similarly, we can just also batch craft a whole bunch of bricks and it will try to make them partially from the smelter because we don't currently have enough stone made. So that explains basic auto crafting in a nutshell, but I mentioned you can also do passive crafting. And what exactly did I mean by that? What it implies is that you can have it make materials over time automatically as the inventory empties out. And there's a couple ways to go about doing that. So we will start with the simplest example, which we're going to need an ME export bus to point into our energized smelter instead of a pattern provider. And in here, we're going to use this filter to tell it we want it to pass in cobblestone just all the time. And you can see that now we have cobblestone getting added to this energized smelter. I changed the export to only put the input on the top and to output to the right. And we're using a mechanism pipe to take the items out of the smelter and put it into this chest. Now that's great if you just want something to output into a chest and just have it dumped somewhere, but this doesn't get it back into our AE2 network, does it? This instead would require a storage bus or something, which 
honestly works fine if you've got something like storage drawers or functional storage or some sort of mass storage that isn't necessarily AE2 but is connected via a single device. That works fine. That said, what if we do want to get it back into our AE2 system? Well, one of the things we could do, instead of using an export bus, we could use an import bus on our output side and connect that up to our network. What you notice is then now pulling the stone into our network. However, this will just fill up our AE2 system full of stone and replace all the cobblestone with absolutely no limits whatsoever. And well, that's not something we want to do, is it? Well, another thing we could potentially do is bring it off to the side here bring it down and add something called a level emitter to the side here. And inside this level emitter, we can tell it that we want it to make, say, 10 stone total in our inventory at any given time. And if we come into the mechanism machine, we can turn this from ignored to normal, which shut it off immediately because this is the wrong setting, and over to inverted because it does not have redstone signals. But if we go into the chest and toss in a bunch of stone, it instantly cuts off because now we have more than 10 so this is now lit up giving a signal, which is why we set that to inverted to only run when it doesn't have one. So uh, that's great, but that used up a whole bunch of channels, didn't it? Well, there is another way we could do this. One of the ways is to bring back the pattern provider with the crafting recipe and it says it's now accessible from the crafting terminal again and use an old device from the earlier versions of this that used to be used as the pattern provider, the ME interface. And we can put this on our network and this is whole purpose is, is to keep a stock of items constantly made. So say we want 10 stone. Well, we can grab one from the chest right here and go in here and put it right there like that. We can then click this up and say we want 10 total, but this will just populate it from our inventory. If we take this out, you see it goes to four because that's all that was left in the chest. What we can do, however, is add a crafting card upgrade. And as soon as we do that, it will tell it to craft items to always keep st 10 stone inside the interface. And this is the part where I realized I don't have this set up to work properly. But as soon as we had this all hooked up properly, it started automatically creating the cobblestone into stone, but you're gonna run into something with this. But as this finishes up, you'll notice that if we take all of the stone out of this and look in the crafting terminal, I have no stone. Because the ME terminal will provide that stone to crafting recipes within the A2 network, but does not make it available to storage. But there is a fix for this. If instead of just connecting it to a cable like this, we come up here and add a storage bus as if this was a chest and reconnect this in, we can come back in here and now we have access to our stone again. And if we were to take the stone out, it immediately starts trying to refill that. So if you set a large enough cap, you can create a random stock of items that you need constantly provided inside that ME terminal, but that limits you to 64 items per stack. Now I could add multiple stacks in here, but again, you're limited to a relatively small pool here and say, we want a lot of them. Well, that's a job for the ME drive, a large storage drive with a high priority in an overflow destruction card. Or you can just restrict it from all your other storages in the process, but the overflow destruction card will mean it will just constantly automatically make whatever that item is and keep it in stock. It, that one's more useful for bringing in items from things like cobble gens or from any sort of thing that fabricates it like productive bees, but it's still useful in a pinch for stuff like this if you need it. But anyhow, I hope this gives you a better idea of how to set up basic automation for your base using Applied Energistics 2. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.